Hello and welcome to the Census Workshop. This is Karim, the host of this research spotlight episode. Today, we are joined by Paige Jackie. Paige got her bachelor's degree in polymer chemistry from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. She worked as undergraduate research assistant at the Leipzig lab, and her undergraduate thesis was entitled "Steric Controlled Cationic Copolymerization of Vinyl Ethers." She got her master's degree in polymer chemistry at Cornell University and currently she is a PhD candidate in first lab at Cornell University, focusing on developing new methods for controlling anionic polymerization resulting in improved user accessibility and sustainability. Welcome Paige and thank you for joining us. Thank you for the kind introduction and opportunity to share my work on the controlled anionic polymerization of methacrylates mediated by carbon dioxide. But to step backwards a bit, I'll first tell you about typical anionic polymerization, which is widely considered one of the best controlled polymerization methods. To use styrene as a simple example first, you would expose styrene to a nucleophilic initiator like butyl lithium, which will initiate chain propagation and the growing chains will have a carbanion chain end. When these polymerizations are kept rigorously air and moisture free, there are no possible termination events until intentional quenching. The significance of this control is shown in the industrial success of SBS rubber or polystyrene block, polybutadiene block, polystyrene block, and its success comes from its elastomeric properties. It is often used as a component in tire production. However, broadly, the challenges for anionic polymerization arise from the need for rigorous purification techniques and the use of reactive and often pyrophoric initiators such as organolithiums. Operational barriers continue to be an issue when this method is applied to more polar vinyl monomers, such as methacrylates, where the propagating chain end is now an enolate, which can undergo more problematic side reactions. These require more specialized initiators that have very short shelf lives and incredibly low temperatures in order to fully inhibit these undesired pathways. Researchers have tried to address these barriers with some success, the development of group transfer polymerization allowed for reaction temperatures at room temperature or above through the stabilization of the propagating enolate with these alkyl silo moieties. But this method is sometimes limited in the possible chain lengths that can be achieved. Similarly, Lewis pair polymerization was developed to achieve excellent control and higher molecular weights, but the reagents used are known to have very high thermal and shock sensitivity. And so we sought to develop a new controlled anionic polymerization method of methacrylates through a similar strategy of tempering the reactivity of the enolate chain end. To do so, we sought a reversible deactivation mediator, wherein the rate of deactivation is faster than propagation, it would only participate in deactivating the chain end, and is relatively cheap, non-toxic, and abundant. When thinking of appropriate mediators that fit our criteria, we found that in small molecule literature, there is precedent for reversible nucleophilic reactivity with CO2. When activated carboxylate salts, such as these malonic half esters, are exposed to heat under an atmosphere of labeled CO2, they undergo efficient exchange. And for these specifically, their decarboxylated intermediate would be an enolate, which is analogous to our propagating chain end. We proposed that CO2 could thus act as a reversible mediator to help temper the reactivity of the enolate chain end at elevated temperatures. Additionally, when looking at our potential reaction scheme in its entirety, we thought that not only would this be an interesting mediator, we thought that protecting our initiator with CO2 from the beginning would create an opportunity for stabilizing the initiator until thermal activation. Thus, we synthesized a library of carboxylate salts that are all nice, easy to dry solids with long shelf lives. And I will focus on the story of these three malonic half ester salts today. First, I will focus on our optimization with this dimethyl salt, as its decarboxylated form is most similar to our propagating chain end in the polymerization of methacrylates. And so first, we expose our initiator to monomer and solvent with 18 crown 6 to assist in fast CO2 exchange, as well as tempo to inhibit any background radical autopolymerization from uh, these reactions being at these high temperatures and then we put everything under a headspace of CO2. These conditions led to moderate control. Our target molecular weight and experimental molecular weight are relatively similar with moderately low dispersity. And we use gel permeation chromatography, or GPC, to characterize our polymer molar mass distribution. And you can see here, we have a nice steep increase on our high molecular weight side on the left, 
but some low molecular weight tailing on the right. And in contrast, when we run this polymerization under a static vacuum or just a nitrogen headspace, we see a significant drop in control and more lower, lower molecular weight tailing. When no 18 crown 6 is present, we see a significant decrease in conversion and a broad dispersity. These results highlight that carbon dioxide is playing an important role in our polymerization mechanism and that ion pair separation is key for good CO2 exchange. With these polymerization conditions and a better understanding in hand, we moved on to the rest of our initiator library and found a very interesting trend. All of the initiators led to high monomer conversion, but the malonic half esters with alkyl moieties led to significant tailing, while the aryl containing structure had an excellent molecular weight matching and narrow molar mass distribution. These results raise the question of could we learn more about how initiator structure impacts polymerization, as that seems to be the main difference here. And so I was able to establish a collaboration with Dr. Alexa Easley, who was a postdoc in our group at the time and is now a professor at NC State in chemical engineering. While within our group for her work, she built this custom CO2 detection apparatus, and we were able to use this setup to mimic polymerization conditions in our system wherein we would have a vial with only initiator, solvent, and additives with no monomer. Then, while heating, we would flow nitrogen through the headspace and detect any CO2 evolved in the system. What we get out are these CO2 evolution profiles. And interestingly, the dimethyl and methyl malonic half esters have this long drawn out evolution profile, while the mixed substituent structure gives us a nice sharp peak. And these results correlate very nicely with the GPC traces, supporting the idea that efficient initiator decarboxylation is linked to initiation efficiency and thus a more controlled polymerization. And so moving forward with the ethyl phenyl containing salt, we were able to successfully target higher molecular weights by increasing the ratio of monomer to initiator. And we achieved high monomer conversion throughout with excellent molecular weight matching and only minimal presence of tailing. And furthermore, we were able to confirm the well-controlled behavior of our system through a kinetic study of our standard conditions. And so we observed linear molecular weight growth with conversion while maintaining a low dispersity throughout. And then taking the natural log of monomer conversion over time, it also shows a linear relationship, which supports our hypothesis that we have a controlled chain growth mechanism. And finally, we can further demonstrate the importance of CO2 in the system by showing that when we toggle the heat on and off, we can effectively turn chain growth on and off. Thus, we are controllably capping and uncapping our chain ends with carbon dioxide. And now that we had a mechanistic understanding of our system, we wanted to demonstrate how its controlled nature could be leveraged for useful materials. And so to demonstrate our high chain end fidelity and its functionality, we performed a standard polymerization under our conditions and effectively functionalize the chain ends through a standard SN2 reaction with benzyl bromide. Analyzing the sample through mal toff mass spectrometry, we were able to confirm that nearly all our chain ends maintained the CO2 functionality and were initiated from our expected initiator. So we had good initiating chain infidelity and good terminating chain infidelity. To further leverage the good chain infidelity of our terminating chain end, we synthesized first a narrow dispersity block of polyethyl methacrylate to high conversion, and then added in methyl methacrylate to extend the chains to efficiently form block copolymers. We observe a nice shift in our GPC trace to indicate that most of the polyethyl methacrylate has been chain extended with methyl methacrylate. Conversely, to take advantage of the initiating chain infidelity of our system, we synthesized an initiator containing this alkyne functionality and exposed it to polymerization conditions. Upon precipitating the polymer, we found that the alkyne functionality was still present after purification. We then took this precipitated polymer and exposed it to click chemistry conditions with this coumarin-derived azide, which only fluoresces after the click reaction. Subsequently, we observe for our polymer that there is only fluorescence after being exposed to the functionalization reaction, indicating successful post-polymerization modification. Finally, to really demonstrate the versatility of the method, we were able to successfully synthesize a wide range of methacrylates, from typical alkyl functionality to these biorenewable monomers that have previously been explored for their interesting thermomechanical properties. Additionally, we were able to polymerize functional group containing methacrylates, such as a perfluoro group, methoxyethyl group, and allo group. I want to especially highlight this radical containing methacrylate, or tempo methacrylate, that can really only be directly polymerized through anionic polymerization methods, and is thus of interest for battery applications. 
And with that, I would like to acknowledge all the past and present members of the FORS group who have really helped see this work evolve. And I would like to thank Cornell and NSF for funding. And I would like to thank you for listening to this latest effort in developing new controlled methods for anionic polymerization. Thank you, Paige, for your incredibly insightful presentation. If you enjoyed this research spotlight episode, please leave subscribe to our channel and follow us on Twitter. And you can also find us on LinkedIn. Thank you for watching and see you in the next time.